Hello students, we are dealing with chapter 5 of class 11 psychology that is the chapter on sensory, attentional and perceptual processes. You have already gone through first three parts and today we will talk about the fourth part of this chapter which is on perceptual processes and influences. In this part we shall cover the processing approaches in perception. We shall also talk about the perceiver and the socio-cultural influences on perception. Till now, you know that we have certain sensory receptors that help us look at things around in the world. But these are only the raw materials for our senses, provided by the sense modalities. For example, we know that there is a sound because our ears help us detect this. We also know that there is some flash of light as our eyes are telling us about it. But we do not understand or are able to know what is the source of the sound or this light. We also know there is certain kind of fragrance owing to the sense modality nose. But how strong the fragrance is of what thing it is, is all an activity of the brain. Hence, a raw material of senses is provided by our sense modalities, but to be able to make meaning out of it, this all has to be carried to the brain and individuals use their learning, memory, motivations, emotions and other psychological processes to create meanings. This brings us to the definition of perception. Perception is the process by which we recognize, interpret or give meaning to the information provided by the sense organs. This is not mere interpretation, it is a larger process of making meaning out of the processes. So how does this process work? It is the processing approaches. It involves a number of sub-processes. Let us deal with two of them. The first one is called the bottoms up approach. This is the process in which you recognize the parts and then perceive the whole. The emphasis is on the feature of the stimuli. This is a perception process of mental construction. For example, you see a thing and then you say, okay, these are clouds, this is a mountain, there is a river flowing and therefore this painting is giving us the feel of a scenery of a hill station. So first the paths are perceived and then they are built up into a whole. This is how we perceive things using the bottoms up approach. But there is also another approach to it. For instance, when you see a dog, you see, you say that this is a dog. Do you first perceive its paws, its four legs, its eyes and then you make sense of a dog? Or do you just say it is a dog and then go on to see its different parts? If you first see the dog and then the parts, then you are using the top down processing approach of perception. This deals with the recognition of the whole which leads to the identification of certain components. The emphasis here is on perceiver. The perception is a process of identification of stimuli here. When you meet your friends, you see their face and recognize them. You do not go into the process of saying, okay, these are such eyes, so they belong to my this friend. This shape of the nose or lips or ears belongs to this friend and therefore taking all that in totality I am able to say the name of the friend. No, here you use the top down approach looking at the face recognizing the friend and then seeing the other parts. Many of the psychological studies have shown that we use both these processes. Both of them interact in our cortex or the brain and then they provide us with the understanding of the world. So, any individual does not follow a top-down or a bottoms-up approach in isolation. Both these approaches are intercorrelated and are together used to make sense of the world around us. This process of making sense of the world by using the stimuli is not a mechanical one. 
human beings are not passive observers of the world. They are creative beings. They use their own experiences, motivations, learnings, attitudes, values, even their own personality characteristics to make meaning of the world. The sense of a stimuli does not lie in the stimulus itself. It is rather constructed with the constant interaction of the human being and the environment. Hence, this process of perception is not limited to the stimuli. It is very much influenced by who is perceiving it. This who is the perceiver and he or she is as important as the stimulus characteristics. So now, let us deal with the perceiver who plays a very important role in how and what is perceived. We try to understand the external world in our own individual ways, putting across our own points of view. There are several factors that influence our perceptions. The factors influencing and affecting the perceiver can be divided into many. Let us deal with the five major ones. Motivations. The needs and desires to get certain things, achieve them or to have anything is the motivation. We perceive objects in pictures as something that will satisfy our needs. You might have noticed that whatever is our motivation, we try and get things done. If I want to get good marks in class, I will try and do more work. But I will also try and look into my paper for the tick marks rather than the red marks. So whatever I am perceiving will be actually related to the motivational factors. Don't you believe this? Well, there have been innumerable psychological experiments conducted in this regard. The best ones have tried to see the effect of the motivating factor of hunger on people's perception in pictures. Certain simple and complex experiments were done. Subjects were shown pictures with ambiguous and vague things. These pictures were perceived as those of food items by people when they were hungry more often as compared to the people who were not hungry. So satiated people did not see these objects as food objects, whereas hungry people saw them as food objects, when in reality they were only vague pictures and not those of food objects. So this tells us that motivations play a very major role in what and how we perceive. All our sense organs and all our sense modalities are affected by these factors of perceiver. Experiments, however, have majorly been done in the visual field. You will see examples in other fields as well. If you are very hungry, any smell coming would be detected as a fragrance of a food item. However, if you are not hungry, even a slight smell of a food item will go unnoticed. So your perception varies with what you are wanting at that moment. Another very important factor that is related to perceivers and how they make sense of the external environment is expectations or perceptual sets. These are also known as perceptual familiarizations or perceptual generalizations. Whenever you are familiar with a certain thing occurring at a certain time, you will more or less expect that to happen and even say that it happened even if your results are not accurate. For example, if your milkman rings a doorbell at 5 every morning. So whenever the doorbell rings, you will perceive that it is the milkman, whereas it might be someone else. I came across an interesting example about this in my life. I used to live in my home and every morning my father would wake me up calling my name. One day I went to the hostel and in the very first morning it appeared to me as if my father's voice was coming and repeating my name. When I got up, of course my father was not there. But the familiarity, the expectation, that is, the perceptual set made me perceive that sound which was not the accurate sound at that time. You might see other examples about this. If during your exams, you sleep for say 30 minutes and set an alarm after 30 minutes. You are so much wanting to get and expecting those 30 more minutes to get over very quickly. So even 
after 20 minutes or 25 minutes, you will feel as if you heard the alarm ringing, whereas it was not ringing at that moment. Why? Because of the factor of expectation. Another important factor is the cognitive styles. This means all the perceivers would have different kind of styles in which they make sense of the external world. This is a consistent way of dealing with our environment. It also affects our perception. There are several ways in which we deal with the cognition. Some of them have been studied more in detail. And the most studied one have been the styles of field dependence and field independence. People who are said to be field dependent perceive external worlds in its totality. That is, they look at a global or holistic view. However, people who are field independent in their cognition styles perceive the world by breaking it into small units. They use the analytic or the differentiated manner to arrive at perceptions. You can see a figure on your screens. This is an example of embedded figure task. Now, the figure which is there on the right has the left one embedded in it. People who are field independent will find out this very quickly. However, the field dependent people will take more time in detecting the embedded figure in the larger picture. So, people might at times look at the whole field and then look at the things embedded in them. And other people have different styles who look at the things first and then the background. There are many more cognitive styles which you will study more in detail as you progress in the field of psychology. The cultural backgrounds of the perceiver also impact the perceptual processes. What experiences you have had, what learning opportunities you have faced in your life will of course affect how you perceive the world. For example, Eskimos are known to be able to detect different kinds of snows because they live in an environment which is covered with snow and ice. We shall not be able to do this if we come from the plains. Similarly, certain people from Siberian regions can know about dozens of skin colors of reindeers. For you and me, a reindeer would appear of the same skin color because we are not used to looking at them. Hence, what culture we come from, what opportunities we have had, what exposures we have had, will all determine what perceptions we relate to things on. Psychologists have been very bewildered and very intrigued with this question at the same time. Are the socio-cultural influences that important in perception? Is this a uniform process through which we all go? Or are the cultural differences actually making perception different for all of us? There have been many studies in this regard. You know that we all look different depending upon what culture and environment we come from. Do we also perceive things differently? There have been n number of experiments done in this regard using the pictorial material. You are familiar with Muller Lyer and vertical horizontal illusions? You can see them on your screen. Now, taking these, many experiments have been done to perceive how these illusions affect people from different cultural backgrounds. Siegel and his associates did a series of experiments with these illusions having people from African jungles and those from the cities of Europe. There were many differences that were found in the African and the Western populations with regard to these illusions. They saw that people coming from remote African villages are more susceptible to the visual horizontal illusions. They live in dense forests and come across tall trees in their daily life. Hence, they tend to underestimate height. On the contrary, people living in cities in the European Western world are surrounded by the environment which has right angles to the maximum. Hence, they underestimate the length of lines in enclosures like that in the molar layer illusions. Other experiments with pictures have been how the pictures are perceived. Is the perception of depth evident in the pictures for everyone? And there have been interesting results in this regard. Hudson 
took the African populations living in jungles who were very less exposed to pictures. And he saw that these people were not able to recognize objects in pictures even if they came from their daily lives. Objects like spades and spears. So, conclusions have been made that to be able to perceive depth in pictures, to be able to see events in pictures, a lot of verbal cues are important. Informal verbal cues and regular exposures only let us make sense out of pictorial depictions. In, in the Indian setting, Sinha and Mishra have done many experiments by taking people from different populations. They took hunters and gatherers who live in jungles, agriculturalists who live in villages, and working people from towns. And they also came to the same conclusions that to be able to perceive pictures, to be able to see the events and make sense out of them, a regular exposure to pictures was very important. Thus we see that to be able to have visual equity of pictorial graphics, we need to be exposed. Past experiences and learning of the perceiver are very important in this regard. So friends, in this section today, you saw that personal, social and cultural conditions are of immense importance when it comes to the perceptual processes. You also saw two sub-processes of perception. Perception of the stimulus is a result of the stimulus characteristics and those of the perceiver. They are both key factors. In the next sections, we shall deal with illusions and certain constancies. I hope by now you have started developing the interest in the sensory and perceptual processes of your daily life and the world. Thank you. Mm -hmm.